How's it going folks? Welcome to another vlog. Me and Jack head out on a mission and do a bit of campcraft, a wee bit of bushcraft and some survival stuff as well. Uh, cutting a bit in here so then I can slot on so I can hide on the flat we've got down here. Good dog. Sit. So go, that's it, that's it. Nice, nice, that's a clovefish, nice. Feed that under there again. Just under the log. What you're gonna have to do, bro, is pin it just behind the head and wait till he wraps around the stick. While I've got your attention, tap that subscribe button and also the notifications bell. If you could, that would be fantastic. What flavors have we got, bro? Chuck them here. Bacon mash. Bacon mash. Oh, mate, that's my absolute favorite, absolute wilderness meal right there. You then the dishes, Jack. Oi, that's my spoon. How good is that, eh? Mm. We go to Kaikoura and visit Will Wilding. What are you up to? Um, going fishing. Where are we? Kaikoura. What are we going to catch? Kingfish. We just camped on the side of the road. We're freedom camping. <laughs> we drove around and we saw no camping here, no overnight parking, no camping. Well, what the heck, blimmin' tourists. <laughs> I've just seen the road like this. <laughs> oh, it's not even that big, bro. Yeah. Maybe oh, shit, the bed. <laughs> Maybe you put it. You caught yourself. <laughs> As Kev was winding in, the tags on his pants have got dropped through the reel and then it's wound more line onto the reel and now he's stuck to the reel because he can't get his tags out. So we're going to have to reset the drop so we can get himself unstuck. I'm going to cut that like that. And we're going to open this up. Check out my kelp sack. I've never done this before. I've cooked crayfish on the fire and whole fish on an open fire in kelp. I've never done it in the oven at home, so this is a bit of a try. I don't even know if Will's oven works, hopefully it does. So we're just going to jam the fish in there and bloody bake it. A little bit of salt and pepper, nothing fancy. Uh, oh, look at that, grow for cheeks. See how to de skin a grow for cheeks? Yeah, you've been schooled, son. Change my mind, I'm going to go a little bit fancy. I'm going to put some chopped spring onions, some sesame oil, some balsamic vinegar, some soy sauce, and a little bit of brown sugar in with it as well. <laughs> the cow it probably, cow yeah, crackling. The cow crackling. I should have crackled the cow, eh? <laughs> probably tastes horrendous. I don't know if it's even going to taste good. I hope it doesn't taste like shit because I put a lot of time and effort in it. I come all the way from the west coast. We've got blue nose coming out of our ears. <laughs> come on, mate. Is it tough as old boots? It's not meant to be tough. It's meant to just slice to bits really nice. You carved up a few cows in your time, Will. With the prop. <laughs> a few bull cows, eh? How did I get a fishing show? I do not know. <laughs> I'm just going to say, get on the horse, Charlie, and ride it. It's just like riding a motorbike, but it's totally different. We also catch up with Al Perian, who's got the charity Will to Live, which is a mental health charity. So look that up on Instagram and Facebook. Get behind that, folks. It's a great cause and she's doing a fantastic job. She's going to be traveling New Zealand, doing a bit of a tour in the next couple of weeks. What do I? <laughs> just about your, your charity. Just run us through it once more. Oh, okay. Um, I started up a mental health charity last year called Will to Live, and it's a um, rural mental health kind of campaign that we started. We um, thought about having like a nationwide speak up tour and going into like local isolated pubs and spreading awareness and also helping people um, heal themselves through while they're in isolation and living in like areas where they can't see counsellors or ring anyone so um, yeah we're kicking off in the North Island on the 26th of June in Wairapa and then we'll be doing the South Island um, throughout July and August so sweet do you yeah. have a website Facebook page yeah we've got an Instagram, Instagram and um, Facebook but we yes the website's coming at the moment awesome so, yeah <laughs> Check it out, Will to Live, go catch up with Al at a local pub near you. 
she's doing a really fantastic job. All right, beauty, we'll keep pushing you. You're at one with a horse now, Charlie. Yeah. Can you ride the horse back? No. What do you reckon? Cool, we can get horses. A spot of spotlighting? Yes, that was fun, wasn't it? All right, chuck them on the back. Put two hot holes in its legs and then you can winch it up, Charlie. Nah, he'd be too, too gross to eat because he's been just sitting there with his guts in the night. Duck liver pate, that's a good one. Tonight, you fellas, I'm going to show you how to cook some duck liver pate. This is delicious and nutritious, I believe, full of iron. And also how to roast duck. Right, first you need a duck or two. Girl, go get him! Good girl! Right, you want to eat some feathers, pig? And you get the heart and the liver. You don't have to add the heart in there, but I like to add the heart just to give it a bit more grunt. Chop it up very finely, the liver. Finely chop some onions, finely chop some garlic. Get some fresh herbs, parsley and thyme's the best. And Pluck your ducks, gut your ducks. Pour some hot water over the duck and then the skin will tightens up. And when the skin tightens up, that mounts the fat under the skin. Oh, prick holes in the breast. Did I mention that? Prick holes in the breast and all over wherever the fat is. And then when you roast it, the fat will drain out of the duck and end up in your roasting pan. And you can reuse that fat to bake potatoes in. Delicious. Uh, you'll also need the fat for the duck liver pate because you cook the liver and the onions. Now how to cook the duck liver pate, get your pan nice and hot, cook the onions first and then when the onions are done, take them out of the pan, get it real hot, chuck the, pat, duck, the liver in, chuck the liver in and the garlic in the pan, cook it till it's cooked, chuck the onions back in, chuck the herbs in and then you can either take it out, add the cognac afterwards, or you can add, oh brandy, sorry, add the brandy afterwards, or you can splash the brandy into the pan and take it off the heat. Tastes slightly different both ways, just figure out a way that suits your taste, and then blend it up. You can blend it up if you just, and just eat it as it is. If you want the classic pate look, then you fellas will have to blend it up to get it all nice and pasty and creamy. Uh, otherwise, you can just put it straight on toast. Oh, toast and butter. Delicious, enjoy. Have you had a woman in here tidying up, Will? Yeah, that's not where I remember because it's usually just on the bench. We're trying to find the blender so we can whiz the woo -woo pate up. Old spuds. Gross. It's empty. <laughs> 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 there. What the hell? Oh, I know where it is. It's at the bullsar rank because we used it to make a brine. I'm not going to eat any. You need the piggy shot, really? Yep, because of the parasites. We're going to cook the back steaks up on the pig. I know there's trichinellica parasite here in New Zealand, but hardly anyone gets it. And Will's been riding the lightning for years and hasn't got it. And he always eats his pigs after he's killed them. He doesn't put them in the freezer. You're supposed to freeze the pork for three weeks to kill the parasite. Cooking with Will. Um, breadcrumbs, paprika, sage. Crushed coriander seeds, salt and pepper. That's Charlie's pig that he shot last night. Should be good. It's not. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do the dishes as we need them from the cutlery drawer. <laughs> that oil is like pure Alberta crude, eh? It's so black. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but the best for our guests. That don't kill the parasites, nothing will. Yeah, I know. You wouldn't read about it, eh? That guy's got his own fishing show. He can't catch fish for shit. I don't know why people pay to watch your videos. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> exactly. Who would have guessed, eh?